find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's a rambling movie minute. Today is June 3rd, 2014, live from Pittsburgh. Uh, today we're going to talk about some awesome stuff. We're going to run down what happened this week in uh, movies, in theaters. Then we're going to talk about Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, as Hercules. We're going to talk some 22 Jump Street, uh, also the voice of Thanos, and uh, animator live action, Disney movies. Which one do you prefer? Also, we're going to hit up on movies coming out this weekend, The Unopposed, Edge of Tomorrow, good old Tom Cruise with his crooked teeth. And then we're going to review the movies that we watched uh, this past weekend. Hey, we're back. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, so joining us this week, as usual, the awesome Mike Sword. How's it going, Mike? I'm going good, going good. Uh, I caught a little bit of movies on Netflix this weekend. I'm excited to talk about uh, Pain Again here later in the episode and, and hear what, uh, uh, so how some of these new ones uh, uh, turned out. Nice, uh, nice. And also we got Mad Mike. How's it going? Hi, everybody. Um... It's going pretty good. I, I saw a whole bunch of ways to die in the West, and I saw a Mexican killing a lot of people this weekend. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Those Mexicans. Watch yeah, but that's just New York. We're talking about the movies this show. Yeah, oh! Right. Uh -huh. Boom. Right. Ba -dum -ba. All right, so hey, uh, let's start this off with uh, movies in this weekend. As Mad Mike predicted, I bow to you, sir. Very nice. Uh, Maleficent destroyed the box office. Uh, pulled in a whopping $69.4 million with a very lukewarm, very split down the middle uh, rating, 51%. Uh, so, yeah, I give them credit. Um so much that the movie that I thought the big matchup they were going up against was A Million Ways to Die in the West. Uh, that only pulled in $16.8 million and with a very low uh, 33%, which I don't actually consider that low. But um, in comparison to movies, X-Men topped that with uh, $32.6 million. So more than double that score, which is, uh, yeah, I guess that's saying something. Well, uh, see, the thing is about A Million Ways to Die in the West, a lot of people expect it to do as well as Neighbors. Neighbors has more of a family-friendly feel to it mm -hmm. than A Million Ways to Die in the West does. Just because it's like, hey, they're parents and they have a child. It can't be too raunchy, can it? And it wasn't. Yeah, I also Ways heard... Yeah, there's just some things that happened this weekend, and none, none of the two movies were really pulling me as much as I thought they would. But I did hear from the trickle-down effect that if you're going in uh, prepared to see A Million Ways to Die, you should be prepared for a very long movie. It seems like it just kept going. Um, I didn't think it was that long, per se. Um. I feel like a lot of it was spoiled if you watch television and have seen trailers. <laughs> that seems like the usual norm, though, when it comes to those kind of things. Um, yeah, we'll get we'll get back into your your trailer or your review for that later on in the show. Um, let's jump into like news. Uh, so. I think the big thing, I don't know if this is the biggest thing, but this is something that uh, I thought was interesting. What do you guys think? We have a voice of Thanos. Oh, yes. Yes. Josh Brolin, most notably from, uh, I, I want to say, well, I'm not going to say most notably, but he was in Sin City. Um, yeah. I, I kind of wish he just wasn't the voice. I kind of wish he was Thanos. Yeah, but this character, I, he's definitely going to be a CG kind of guy. Yeah. I mean, we already seen him kind of a little bit in as that in, in, in Avengers. Um, and and so this is... Now, wait a minute. So he pops up in, in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, actually, right? Yes. Yep. 
So, and, and supposedly this is going to lead into the Avengers? Supposedly. supposedly. Uh, I think it's supposed to lead into Avengers um, 3. More okay. than two because two is just Age of Ultron. So, okay. I don't I don't know how the whole Thanos thing plays it plays with Ultron. I don't know. I don't think it necessarily does. But, mm-hmm. but I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, we know like Thanos is a big is a part of Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think he's a big part. I think the main villain is Ronan the Accuser. Mm-hmm. But but Thanos is definitely in there. Cool. I wouldn't even be surprised if he was um, like like an after credit scene. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, huh. actually, I'm reading here that in Avengers, the that last ending credits we saw, um, they they're saying that that was actually played by uh, Damon. I'm gonna butcher his last name, but uh, Politer or whatever, the face and body. Um, so, yeah, I guess even though they're saying that if the character does return as CG, uh, they're not sure, or if they're just going to use that guy. Well, I mean, they could do it like they do the Hulk. Like, they had, um, uh, Mark Ruffalo act out some of the parts for Hulk, like Hulk mannerisms and things like that, and they video capped it, and then they CG to fit that. So they could do something similar to that with Josh Brolin, I think. Huh. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know, just based on his, like, facial expression, his character demeanor, I think he's perfect for that. I kind of just wish we saw more of him on screen, but uh, I'm very excited about that. I think that's a big name. Not that we really need any other big things to hype up the Avengers or any of the Marvel movies. I um, think it lends yeah. some credibility to Guardians, though. Mm-hmm. I think it lends credibility to Guardians for people who are unsure about seeing it because they don't know of those characters. But if they hear Josh Brolin's in it, they'll be like, oh, maybe that's a real thing. But I mean, the characters, though, that we have are pretty big star name characters. Um, the guy from The Office, I can't remember his name. And Ni- Naomi. I think that illustrates my point. <laughs> Uh, well, no, I guess so. Uh, that is true. Chris Pratt hasn't really been in many movies. Mm-hmm. That's He's just been true. As the guy from Parks and Rec. Yeah, That's... this is this is gonna be his big coming out as far as that goes. Um, yeah, right. and, and, and yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's a different kind of movie. It's not it's not characters people are even you know fringely heard of like Iron Man and Captain America. Uh, so it has a lot to prove. Like I. I I would be surprised if that movie did gangbusters at the uh, at the at the box office like on the level of other things do for Marvel. I, I think the first week is going to be not as well received as they would like, mm-hmm. but I have a feeling the movie is going to rely on a lot of word of mouth, kind of, kind of like Iron Man did, and yeah. it will do fine. Like I have a feeling the second week for Guardians might even be better than the first. Yeah. Awesome. I apologize for saying that he was in the office. It was Parks and Rec. I should know that. I religiously watched both of those television shows. <laughs> he also was in the movie um, that where we got Osama. He was one of the soldiers. Yes. Oh, the Zero, Zero Dark Thirty? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. So. Um, but yes, like I said, we don't really need the hype up. I guess if it could, if it lends credibility, I guess that's good. I am still going to see the movie, so it doesn't matter. They could just keep tagging on awesome people. Um, hey, so I found this this interesting article with the you know the release of Maleficent, where they were questioning whether Disney movies, uh, which ones hold up better. Um, in our day of age, we know with CG and like special effects. A lot of our animated uh, movies and old television shows are being revamped for the CG realistic world. So I was going down the list of uh, some of them, and uh, I don't know. I wonder what you guys, what your opinions on are these. Like the first one that they have shown up is uh, 101 Dalmatians. I kind of feel like uh, that one. I'm I'm taking animated over that because. That you know, that's kind of a fluffy one. I think one that lends more interesting is the Lord of the Rings. Uh, what do you guys think about that? You also got to look at it, you know, so, uh, uh, 
it, it, Lord of the Rings was not done well in animation versus I think you know something like like 101 Dalmatians is more of a timeless animation style like they put money into it for the time so it's going to hold up more right um, and, and versus you know looking at I think 101 Dalmatians the, the live action one looks dated in comparison and, and oh, yeah. you know it, it, it kind of depends on what uh, it kind of depends on on, on on what production value is put into to either form of it um, well, it, and plus a lot of the live action Disney movies are just sold on how well the villain looks in comparison to the animated version. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at Cruella de Vil in the live action 101 Dalmatians, Glenn Close looks exactly like Cruella de Vil in the cartoon. Mm -hmm. Like, so I think Disney even recognizes that, hey, we're just trying to double dip here. We know the animated version is probably the better oh. one. I, you know, I'm at odds on this one, this this third one in here, Robin Hood, the Fox version of Robin Hood or Kevin Costner's version of Robin Hood. Man, no. um, I'm kind of I'm going to go with Mel Brooks's version of Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> Between their two comparisons, the animated version of Robin Hood is extremely better. Oh, I love the Kevin Costner Robin Hood. I, I watched that religiously. Like We're men. We're men in tights. <laughs> I mean, like, I Around agree with the different argument. Because, like, even the fourth one in this Jungle Book, like, all of the animated, I mean, besides Lord of the Rings, I'm feeling like almost all of the animated ones hold up a lot better. You know what I'm surprised they didn't put on here White. that the live action is a lot better? Hmm. George of the Jungle. Wow. <laughs> Brendan Fraser is amazing as George. He was. I'm going to go on record and say that. And you have John Cleese playing Ape. That's perfect. That is, that is fantastic to me. That, is, that, is, that actually might be my favorite Disney live action movie. George of the Jungle. Watch out for that tree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I will say um, in The Grinch, I think The Grinch would be a good one to compare because that's one where I think they, they had a lot of liberties mm -hmm. with the new live action rendition, although that was very character driven. I am. Yeah, well, that, was, that was just Jim Carrey playing around in green makeup the whole time. Yeah, I, it, it's something like the Flintstones. Like it was nice that they did a live action one, but in the long run, like you know, it's still very timeless. And I did learn that they're going to have a, uh, a Flintstones WrestleMania movie in the near future. <laughs> I oh, Sorg, I said this on the Mayhem Show. I'm going to say it now. If the main event, or if they if, if they don't reference The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. In Bedrock, they're not doing their jobs accurately. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway. Sad, sad, sad. Hey, all right. So two trailers that I thought were very interesting of note that I think we should uh, look at. The one that came out, I believe today or yesterday, was the was the release of the rock it's not actually the rock isn't listed on this it's dwayne johnson they're not referring to him as the rock no and they haven't for a while actually um but yeah in hercules now mind you i believe this is our second hercules of this year mm -hmm. um, if you have a chance to watch this movie or this trailer Check it out. Um, my impressions on the trailer are I wasn't too impressed. <laughs> I think it's better and, than the other one. Yes, the other one was extremely bad. The other one just uh, looked like 300. This just looks like The Rock somehow got thrown into a Percy Jackson movie. And it could be all right. It really could. I mean, like, I... I feel like he – well, no, I'm not – I can't make that argument because, like, Mike, you made a comment in the pre-show, which I kind of agree with. With his movies, I have a tendency to just go see them because I feel like it's just going to be, like, a lot of just, like, action just thrown into it, like, constantly. But he doesn't always. He, do, he definitely doesn't always. He's had a lot of really – artsy films you know i mean he was in that uh, be cool he was uh part of the uh ah uh, geez what was that crazy movie they had with like uh sir michelle Southland geller tales. and a bunch of other people what's that southland tales yeah yeah flatland tales 
Um, like he he's trying to be more than just action hero guy, although he does a lot of that too. You know, uh, really big with GI Joe and Fast and the Furious. Um, and, and, but he does like I think he does a pretty good range if you pay attention to what he has done. I mean, he did Disney movies for a while, right? Um, and to be yeah. fair, those are difficult to do. <laughs> yeah. no, We're just going to you know, stick to you as a fairy, and you'll be they fine. make you do some oh. ridiculous crap in those movies. And dealing with kids in general. They come out looking like the good guys. Mm -hmm. Like, they make you do some ridiculous, horrible, horribly parenting things in those movies. And you still have to come out smelling like a rose. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Vin Diesel couldn't do it. I saw That's... the pacifier. He could not do it. Now he's playing the giant tree. Oh, man. Um, one thing, I'm looking at some of the uh, thumbnail shots, um, which we should post after the show. One thing this reminds me of is Scorpion King again. Yeah. Is that bad? I mean, I like yes. the Scorpion King. Well, I don't know. It'll only be bad if if we see a full CG Hercules running around and... That was defense. the mummy too. Come on, <laughs> that was the mummy returns. That was that was rough. Oh, he man. even did the people's eyebrow as a scorpion. Like, come on, scorpions don't have eyebrows. <laughs> That's the problem he has with this movie. That is absolutely the problem I have with this one. Jeez. Oh. All right, uh, moving on. The other trailer that I'm extremely pumped. I think they did. I think this is the second or the first rendition for the TV spot. Actually, I think this is the second or third one, actually. But it's uh, 22 Jump Street. And um, I watched, I saw this preview in one of the, uh, one of the movies I saw recently. Um, and then I saw another TV spot. And I could not stop laughing. And my wife just looked at me like I was an idiot. But I don't know what it is about these these guys pairing up. I just pumped to see this movie. I think it's going to be hilarious. I'm excited to see it. I haven't seen the first one. I need to get my hands on it somehow. But something tells me I don't. I won't have to see the first one to be able to watch the second one. No. Getting that the only thing. <laughs> The only thing you need to know about the between the first one and the second one is that uh, they crossed the street and now they're in college. That's it. Okay, so so basically, watch a trailer. That's it. All right. Bye. Uh, Talk. All right, all right, and we got some other stuff here too. Um, um, of course, uh, uh, let's see what we got. We got uh, uh, Edge of Tomorrow coming out this weekend. Uh, Groundhog's Day meets, uh, uh, what was it, Jack Ryan or whatever. Oblivion. <laughs> Oblivion. Oh, yeah. Oblivion meets uh, meets Groundhog's Day. Uh, I'm sick of seeing Groundhog this. Day. They were showing an extended exclusive clip on the Arrow, not even finale. Uh, uh, it felt like a month ago. You know, I uh, you, what? I don't know. I it, it it's a good concept. I just I it's hard for me to have received too much Edge of Tomorrow, like too many trailers for a movie, considering I don't watch regular TV, and it feels like I have. I feel like I've yeah. already seen the movie. Yeah, yeah, it, it does like, a little bit. Like I, I, can, well, I definitely... can I give what I think is going to happen in the movie just based on watching every trailer I've seen for it, for it for this. Yeah. Okay, like, that's a novel um, idea, but I I don't know. It's one of those like if I popped it up on Netflix, I feel like I, I'd be like, oh, it's a pleasant surprise of a movie, or I'll forget about. It. Like I went and watched Oblivion when it popped up on HBO or something. And it was like, hey, that was actually not half bad of a fun movie to watch. Nice little twist. But I feel like we're gonna get a relatively same concept here again. It doesn't even yeah. seem like a twist. It just seems like. He keeps dying over and over until he becomes the one. We'll see. You know the reason that worked in The Matrix? <laughs> yeah. Keanu Reeves only died once. Exactly. exactly. Jesus didn't die a whole bunch of times before he saved the world. <laughs> <laughs> they're, re they're doing the concept too much. I'm like, what do you think of this one? I mean, I'm excited to see it, but that's just my one of my side man crushes on Tom Cruise movies. I agree kind of totally. I'm going to see the movie, but I think the problem that we're running into is 
the oblivion meets groundhog day effect and they know that people have this prop like, and like people oh, are conceiving it with this problem oh it's like groundhog's day oh okay yeah All right. so now it's like oh crap let's show so much of this that people are just like that's not what this is like let's try and hype people up and i honestly think it is starting to have the opposite effect mm-hmm. like what you said so absolutely like now people groundhog are just like day. This is Groundhog's Day. Like, why? Like, why go see I this? want there to be a scene where Tom Cruise just gets every answer on Jeopardy right. <laughs> or Bill Murray just shows up. He looks at Tom Cruise and says, You too, huh? We also haven't seen much of the aliens just walks away. on this one. Um, yeah, that'd be a nice little Easter egg. Uh, it's. <laughs> As long as can, can I can I make a confession? Can we not have uh, a Tom Cruise shirtless? Because it's kind of weird at his age. Oh my god! And Tom Cruise pretending that he's tall. There's that too. Yeah. That happens you a lot. You notice Emily Blunt is lying down in every shot in that trailer to make Tom Cruise look taller than her. Every single shot, <laughs> she's lying down or crouching or something, just so God. Like people can look up how how tall Tom Cruise is now, he's like four eight. I don't. <laughs> I will I will give them credit on the release date because remember I thought this movie came out going head to head against Maleficent. Mm-hmm. They managed to get the only the only movie releasing this weekend, and I I think people. I mean, like I'm a rare breed. I feel people that would just want to go see a movie might be compelled to go see this but when you're up against nothing it definitely lends itself to having a pretty good opening weekend yeah i i still think maleficent or x-men is going to beat it if x-men beats this movie man i will have to buy you pizza Mike. i i mean <laughs> It's it's probably unlikely to happen because people still go see Tom Cruise movies. But, uh, like, if I had a choice to see a movie this weekend, I would see anything but this. I would see Heaven is for Real. Like, I, I would find that out oh, okay. of the dollar theaters. I mean, this is that. not the only thing coming out. I, I, uh, but it's the only thing of note. Uh, the other things coming out are The Fault in Our Stars, Willow Creek, Obvious Child, and Trust Me. I would yeah, rather I don't see think the any of those are getting major releases. No, these are all limited release kind of stuff, art, art films, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, they're going to get the default one, or everybody's going to go see X Men again. Dude, they're raking in right now an eighty nine percent. Yeah. It's like I don't, I don't know. I mean, and that's critics. That's I, not even like I'm shocked that X Men's at ninety two percent. To be honest. And holding it on Yeah, it's not bad. I wanted to look up the... Uh, I should have done this before. I'll make sure I don't make this mistake next time. But uh, Doug Lyman is the director for this movie. I wanted to see what other movies he's done. Maybe to give us... Okay, so he's done Go, which... Eh, Swingers. Right, Swingers was not action. His only other action movie was The Bourne Ultimatum. And given that, now I'm a little skeptical. Mm. <laughs> uh, anyway, 80, 89%. I'm pumped. I think I'm going to go see it. It's going to be a good popcorn movie, I think. Yes, I will bring my own popcorn and buy popcorn. That's all I'm excited. What? <laughs> all right, so uh, let's move on. What you guys watch this weekend? I watched Pain and Gain. <laughs> I was excited yeah. about that one. So this is the one, uh, again, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and uh, Mark Wahlberg. Do I have the right Mark? Is it Marky Mark? I, th- right? I think we just found a Transformer. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Um, oh, yeah. But a pleasant surprise, I think. For those who don't know, this is the one where it's the bodybuilders. It's based on a true story. Uh, basically, the, the, the bodybuilders builders uh decide they want to get rich off of somebody else they kidnap somebody and this and hilarious hijinks ensue um i love this i love this film because um um everybody has an inner monologue everybody that's important in this uh some people pop up that in this film that i didn't know were a big thing uh anthony mackie is the third bodybuilder 
uh, the less important of the bodybuilders, apparently. Uh, but he's hilarious in it, too. Uh, well, he, he was also Falcon in uh, Winter Soldier. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I thought, I'm like, I know this guy from a movie. Um, there you go, Falcon. Um, uh, Tony Shalhoub, Monk, shows up as one guy. Ed Harris is a character in this. Um, uh, uh, oh, jeez. Uh, Rob Corddry uh, is, is the uh, one owner. Um, don't go into what the movie is about, like the real story of what these guys did going into it. And it gets so ridiculous at a point of this film where they have to pop up. And again, you've been watching this for about an hour and a half. And they pause and say, remember, this is a true story. Mm -hmm. Just to remind you, because it's gone so ridiculous. Um, yeah, very weird. This is a Michael Bay film. Which also amazing because I'm like, why is every incidental shot on tracks? You know, like every shot was moving. Like, like it's like somebody here really loves Michael Bay shots, <laughs> and he did it for like every unactiony <laughs> shot in the movie, at least for like the introductory stuff. Um, like the way it was going, you know, and I finally realized, okay, it is a Michael Bay film, and it's like the lo apparently it's the lowest budget uh, Michael Bay film that he's done since Bad Boys. Um, <laughs> Well, there's not much, you know, big high explosions was, going on in this thing. Actually, there are some explosions, but what are you saying, <laughs> Malengo? Sorry, I thought you had a question. Yeah, I think they're right. I, uh, I honestly didn't make it through the whole movie. You didn't? I did. It, did. it, it was a, it was a fun flick. Yep, it was I a fun movie. It's fun. The, no, rock, I didn't make the it, rock I didn't... was actually, I think, one of the best parts of that movie. Oh, he was, he was, um, because he plays he plays a guy that's a, a reborn a reborn Christian in, in jail, uh, then slides into a coke addiction, <laughs> and uh, it, it's pretty good. Him him and Tony Shalhoub uh, uh, going at it dialogue wise is fun. Uh, Mark Wahlberg is just a trip in this movie. Um, again, just everybody having an inner monologue about what's going on and who they are is just is just great. Uh, I rec I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's definitely a Netflix watch. If you got a uh, lazy Sunday afternoon, perfect. Uh, and and Malego, I know I thought you were you were down on the cloudy uh, the cloudy two movie. I did go to watch it. I'll let you know. I promptly fell asleep trying to watch it. Um, but. <laughs> That I, I tried watching that. No, yeah, I was. No, I wasn't. I wasn't down on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I definitely. I, I mean, it's one that you kind of just go into saying, "Yeah, they're just trying to make some extra cash." I got about half an hour into it, and and I want to. I want to actually finish it. Uh, but I was loving. I was loving the rip it was doing on Jurassic Park. Yeah, that I. That's what I enjoyed, and then it gets. The end gets kind of like, uh, we're getting sappy, but it's a kid's movie, so... Yeah, that's what it is. I also uh, attempted uh, to watch The Lorax, promptly fell asleep. I mean, I was kind of like having some sinusy uh, allergy issues, too, so I was napping a lot The Lorax weekend. is one that you should be awake for. That's a good childhood. Is it good? It's a good remembrance of our childhood. <laughs> Go check that out. All right, I want to take another shot at that probably when I'm more awake. Uh, than I was this weekend. So, uh, what about you, Mike? What did you watch? I got to see a million days to die in the West. Bum, bum, bum. All right, all right. How was this? Um, well, have you seen a lot of trailers for it? Yes, a good yes. number. <laughs> um, do you like seeing most of those trailers? Uh, giving away most of the good jokes of the film. Mm. So what you're saying is we've already seen the film. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying <laughs> because actually some of the funnier parts for me was just the dialogue. Was just the actual dialogue and not the big setups for the jokes. Mm -hmm. Like the there were a lot of really funny parts in there. I was disappointed at one of the trailers spoiling a really, really fun moment in the movie. If you haven't seen the trailer, I'm not going to spoil it. But at the end of the movie, there's a cameo that I didn't expect, and I lost my shit because it was great. It was amazing. Does it involve Will Ferrell? No. God, no. God, no. It involves someone way better, and 
I will give a little bit of a hint. Someone who has already been in a superhero movie this summer. Oh. Ooh. Interesting. Yes. But um, I like. I think I like Neighbors better than A Million Ways to Die in the West, if we're talking R-rated comedies. Um, it was funny, though. I mean, if you're a fan of Family Guy, see the movie. Absolutely. If you're not a fan of that Seth MacFarlane type of humor, wait for bucks because mm-hmm. it is still worth watching, just maybe not twelve to fifteen bucks worth. Okay, interesting. That's the problem. I, I don't like going to see comedies typically in the theater. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, kind of fifty-fifty on that. I yeah. like seeing comedies in the theater, but I also like spending that money on like an action big mm-hmm. blockbuster. Like I. I I've noticed myself not really caring about dramas in the theater either. And so jealous, Mike, because I see you checking at the Alamo Draft House up there. I'm so jealous. So well, jealous. What, Sorg, one movie I want to see when it comes to the Draft House is the sequel for the other movie I saw this weekend. Because I saw Machete Kills. Machete Kills. Machete Kills. So how do you um, feel about Mexicans going ape crazy? on everybody oh my god it was very very funny it was real. <laughs> like i was trying to play mario kart as i was watching machete kills i just stopped playing mario kart because i was watching the movie like i was hardcore into the movie it was very very much fun um danny treo is 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 a gem he, he's just a gem and um charlie sheen is the president so you know it's good and um, Mel Gibson is the big villain in the movie. Oh, man. I guess uh-huh. he is pretty. Oh, oh, yeah, this is the first one. Yes. This is when he so was good. getting some roles, but still hurting for roles. And um, they show you a trailer for the third Machete movie before you watch Machete Kills. <laughs> so it's not a spoiler. And the third Machete movie, if you haven't heard about this, it's Machete Kills Again in Space. <laughs> yeah, they cut, they cut, like, there's a lot of Star Wars references. It, it's, it's just really a fun, fun movie. Like, it's streaming on Netflix right now. It's only, it's less than two hours. Watch it, then watch it again. And just like, just just like watch the beginning trailer for Machete Kills again in space, and see how much they really like. I think they filmed these two back to back. I think they had to, but it was really a lot of fun. Awesome. Would you? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm assuming that is a you would recommend it. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, and the best part is you don't really have to have seen the first Machete. No. no. But it helps. No. I like Machete. I liked it. Nice. Um, I did remember the movie I watched. Uh, it was Rio 2. Rio Dos. Uh, yeah. Um, a lot of music. A lot of singing. Uh, some of it was catchy. A lot of really, really annoying voiceovers by comedians and people that were not funny. Uh, Wait, what movie was this again? Rio 2. Rio 2. Oh, ooh. Ugh. Okay. Um, yeah. That's all I really gotta say. Like, it's not in theaters, obviously, anymore. I saw it on Redbox. I would say, if you want your kids to watch something fun and family-ish, sure. If not, just wait for it to kind of come on TV by accident. <laughs> animation wise though cool animation we've gotten to this uh, point where there's just so much 3D animation where eh, it's another one eh. yeah I mean I definitely wasn't going to spend money to see that one in theaters mm-hmm. and, eh. yeah. the only good thing I've seen come out of Rio 2 is the Rio 2 expansion levels on Angry Birds oh I haven't gotten into those yet yeah, they're fun. 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, so uh, let's wrap this thing up. Where can we find you uh, on that, Mike? Uh, well, if you want to find me and listen to more of my profound statements about me Mexicans killing people, uh, follow me on Twitter at MadMike4883, or every Tuesday night, I'm on SorgatronMedia.com doing the Wrestling Mayhem Show, where I talk about wrestling and try not to sound like a horrible person. <laughs> and Sorg? Uh, of course, I'm over at SorgatronMedia.com to find all the shows we're doing. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, and that's all I got to plug right now. That's it. Cool. That's really it. Cool. And you can find me at Rambling Mango on Twitter, at Rambling Mango. Also, uh, cool news, our Facebook page finally went up. So uh, go check out. Definitely uh, like us on Facebook and join the conversation Well, it's there. actually a Facebook page group if they're looking group. for you yes it's a group but we have a lot of cool discussions there and mm -hmm. uh ask a lot of random questions and good good times also the uh the rambling mango comic strip page is finally posted oh nice um yeah and i have two comic strips up currently i have the the quick kind of it's more of a satire uh review so it doesn't go one way or the other, which will piss people off, and I don't really care. Think far side for comic strips. But uh, I reviewed X Men and Gorilla and uh, <laughs> Gorillas, Godzilla. So those are up and posted. So go on and yeah. Where's that at? Where's that at? Uh, at the ramblingmango.com. All right, there you go. Check out the comic books. Are the comics there? But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's the show. Uh, definitely uh, tell us what you think and stay informed. And enjoy. We'll see you at the movies.